Welcome to the world of fast cars, southern charm, and good all-country mischief. The Dukes of Hazard, a TV series that hit screens in 1979, is a ride down memory lane for many. But what makes it stand the test of time? What enduring qualities turn it into a symbol of the industry? Stick around because we've got some funny, shocking, and sad facts about this beloved show that you won't want to miss. Do you have a cherished memory associated with the series? Perhaps it's the unforgettable General Lee making daring jumps or the quirky characters like Bo and Luke Duke. The show has a way of leaving an indelible mark on viewers. Now, you might be wondering, what makes it an everlasting symbol of the industry? Is it the classic car chases, the close-knit Duke family, or the iconic theme song that's impossible to forget? Tune in as we uncover the timeless elements that keep fans coming back for more. Before we dive into the facts, we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the Dukes of Hazard? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We can't wait to hear from fellow fans. Get ready for a journey filled with laughter, surprises, and a touch of nostalgia. The show has a lot in store, so keep watching for the inside scoop on this beloved TV series. In reflecting on the 1979 television series The Dukes of Hazard, one can appreciate its role as a representation of a simpler time. The show stands as an example of the ability to enjoy and celebrate Southern culture without the complexities that characterize contemporary television. The series distinguishes itself by embodying a sense of lightheartedness and a celebration of Southern values. While it may not be considered cutting-edge television, its success lies in the genuine fun and enthusiasm it exudes. The characters brought to life by the actors and writers are likable, humorous, and honorable. This likability is a key factor that kept viewers returning week after week. The stories, though somewhat contrived, were carried by the infectious enthusiasm and good humor that permeated the show. In contrast to the current trend of shows that often delve into social commentary or aim to make a profound statement, the Dukes of Hazard prioritized entertainment. It served as a reminder of the joy that humor, crafted by real writers, could bring. In a world where television has evolved to explore various themes, the show's commitment to providing genuine laughter becomes a distinctive quality. The reviewer acknowledges that the show may not have the same critical acclaim as others, but it holds a treasured place in their childhood memories. The dismissive opinions of a few individuals in the UK, as reported in a broadcast magazine poll, don't align with the reviewer's sentiment. They emphasize that the show's impact goes beyond the judgment of a select group and holds a special place in the hearts of those who enjoyed it. As the reviewer concludes, they ponder the lasting cultural impact of the show, highlighting a contemporary advertisement playing the General Lee's horn as a mobile download. This serves as a testament to the enduring popularity of certain elements from the Dukes of Hazard that continue to resonate with audiences. In a world where current shows may struggle to leave a lasting impression, this classic series holds a unique position in popular culture. Christopher Mayer, initially vying for the role of Luke, ended up stepping into Tom Wapat's shoes as Vance Duke in The Dukes of Hazard. After Wapat and John Schneider's return following a season five hiatus, the replacement Dukes, Coy and Vance, faced an abrupt exit. The idea of four Duke boys proved overwhelming, prompting the decision to write out the replacements. Fans, despite disliking the temporary characters, expressed a wish for a shared adventure between Bo, Luke, Coy, and Vance. The show's theme, Good Old Boys by Waylon Jennings, not only set the tone, but also made waves as a single in August 1980. Featuring an extra verse and an extended musical bridge, the song reached number 21 on the Billboard Pop Chart and secured the top spot on the country chart. The Dukes of Hazard, with its unforgettable characters and iconic theme, stands as a testament to simpler times and Southern charm. The unexpected twists in casting decisions and the success of the theme song showcase the series' lasting impact on popular culture, extending well beyond its initial run. Waylon Jennings's band, The Whalers, played a pivotal role in the early episodes of the series by providing in episode music. This musical contribution added a distinctive touch to the show, enhancing the overall viewing experience with a Southern flair. Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane, a central character in the series, saw an interesting evolution in his name. The initial P was introduced during the second season, revealing that it stood for Purvis. Thus, Sheriff Roscoe Coltrane became Roscoe Purvis Coltrane. 
This subtle change added a layer of depth to the character and showcased the series' attention to detail. J.D. Hogg's surname Hogg may have drawn inspiration from the historical figure Jim Hogg, who served as the governor of Texas from 1891 to 1895. Notably, Jim Hogg had a daughter named Emma Hogg. This connection to real-life figures adds a touch of historical influence to the character's name, reflecting the show's creative and eclectic inspirations. These behind-the-scenes details, from the musical contributions of the Whalers to the nuanced naming choices for characters like Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane and J.D. Hogg, provide insight into the thoughtfulness that went into crafting the Dukes of Hazard. The series didn't just rely on the on-screen action, it carefully curated elements that contributed to its unique identity. P.J. Souls, vying for the role of Daisy Duke in auditions, faced the twist of fate as her husband, Dennis Quaid, turned down the opportunity to play Bo. Meanwhile, the original locations of Aces used car lot, and the Boar's Nest in Georgia met their demise in 1998, making way for a church expansion. Soro Book, portraying Boss Hogg, had a unique clause in his contract, prohibiting his character from dealing drugs or engaging in acts of violence. This constraint showcased the boundaries set for the iconic character, adding a layer of distinction to Boss Hogg's mischievous dealings. The Whalers, Waylon Jennings's band, played a crucial role in the early episodes by contributing Southern-flavored music. This musical touch provided a distinct ambience, enhancing the overall viewing experience. Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane's character underwent an interesting evolution with the introduction of the middle initial P, revealing that it stood for Purvis, adding depth to his persona. Delving into character names, J.D. Hogg's surname might have drawn inspiration from the historical figure Jim Hogg, who served as the governor of Texas. Jim Hogg's daughter, Emma Hogg, added a historical touch to the character's nomenclature, showcasing the series' eclectic inspirations. Christopher Mayer's journey in the series took a turn as he, initially considered for Luke, assumed the role of Vance Duke. However, the return of Bo and Luke after a season five hiatus prompted the exit of the replacement Dukes, Coy, and Vance due to the overwhelming idea of four Duke boys. Waylon Jennings' theme song, Good Old Boys, not only set the tone for the series, but also became a chart-topping single. The extended version reached number 21 on the Billboard Pop Chart and secured the top spot on the country chart, further solidifying the show's cultural impact. In the grander scheme, The Dukes of Hazard, beyond its on-screen action, meticulously curated elements like music and character names. These behind-the-scenes details contribute to the show's unique identity and lasting influence on popular culture, extending well beyond its initial run.